Welcome back, everybody, to the Houston Texans Madden 21 franchise rebuild. Good to be here in episode two as we are getting into our very first offseason today. And it's good to be back making franchise rebuild content again after the four months I was not. I have really enjoyed this format and I'm ready for an offseason. It's just so weird to be getting into a series like this that is new. And thank you for all the feedback in episode one. Glad to see so many excited about this series. But to already be in the offseason, making changes, making this team ours, it's pretty nice. And this is just the team that fascinates me most right now. Like, the Jaguars are going to draft Trevor Lawrence. Great, we've seen the Jaguars blueprint a thousand times and we'll see it again in the future. We've seen the Jets play out. Teams like that, just not very good. We've seen a lot of blueprints for rebuilds repeat themselves. But how many times have we seen this? A team with a franchise quarterback in his early 20s. Deshaun Watson in our series now 25 years old. But a team that has no draft picks till the third round. A team with significant cap trouble. And a team that is really not in the best shape to compete for a championship right now. But again, we have to go back and say we have Deshaun Watson. And that's what makes everything here different. Because with the right quarterback in place, and Watson is the right quarterback, you're never that far away. Remember with Seattle and their defense no longer being what it was. I think that there were expectations of the rebuild there being a bit more difficult. But there's Russell Wilson and a pretty good offense. And I think with Watson, you can get things going offensively and hopefully make some improvements on defense to where you're back to competing again. This team is only one year removed from their latest playoff appearance. They made the postseason four out of five years as division champions, but I think we all know the AFC South is different, and especially in real life, you're going to see Trevor Lawrence join that division, and the Colts roster has been built well. The Titans roster, mostly on offense, I think is really good. So I think this is a really interesting division to not only watch in real life, but to do a rebuild with here in Madden. Now, in this series, I have simmed all the games to give us the real NFL results through week 16. So not 17. Things are a little bit different there. Texans winning this game, for instance. So we have different award winners. I just wanted to show you this now. And I saw that there's going to be an update coming to Madden 21. We are going to be able to look back at past Super Bowl champions and award winners that'll be coming to franchise mode and there are some updates coming also there's a, a zone coverage update i know that's coming or an update to fix zone coverage so in our version here ryan Tannehill ends up winning the mvp andy reed coach of the year and for other awards around the league Tannehill, miles garrett justin herbert wins offensive rookie of the year of course it's still by conference here in this game for some reason justin jefferson does not win it in the nfc that would be cam Akers as the running backs kind of dominates here and the defensive winners are uh kind of surprising here with logan wilson and chris barnes anyway this is our playoff bracket for year one kansas city seattle in the super bowl Let's get to the offseason now, get this underway, and see who the team to beat is going into next year. That would be Kansas City, now back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions. 44-38, a bunch of points with an overtime finish. This would be an awesome Super Bowl. Wilson, five touchdowns, 400 yards, but it's not enough. As Clyde edwards Elaire gets three scores on the ground, Le'Veon Bell gets a couple. And the Chiefs pull it off. Alright, time for the offseason fun to begin. Beginning with the retirements. We have the 2020 retirements here. Chad Henney, Wesley Woodyard, Dwayne Brown, Big Ben. Could see some new teams get uh, new quarterbacks this year. Alex Smith, Andrew Whitworth, Jason Witten, Adrian Peterson. 12 years here for Alex Mack, 11 for Sean Lee, 25 for Adam Vinatieri. 
and two coaches as well, both coaches from this past Super Bowl in the series, Andy Reid, Pete Carroll. Darren Fells is 35, I had no idea. He's 34 right now in real life until April, so he is the oldest player on the team, followed by J.J. Watt and then Brian Anger, Whitney Merciless. So a fair amount of players this team is relying on that are 30 or older. One of the pieces of feedback I saw from the first episode is to perhaps think about trading J.J. Watt, and I think that it's possible Houston actually does this in real life, although I would be hesitant to do that just because with J.J. Watt, leader of the defense, Deshaun Watson, leader of the offense, I feel like you'd be able to get things better quickly because you have those two players. And my thought right now is that even though we could trade J.J. Watt and maybe get us back into the first round or the second round, I don't know if that is the right call, and I also have liked a lot of the players I found in our draft class here to become early starters, even though our first pick is in the third round. So let's go through free agency first, make some decisions on that later on. We have uh, Will Fuller here. He is the top-rated free agent. If we sign him, we have $14 million in cap space. Is that it? That's all? Okay, that is something I just, I'm not used to. I thought, you know, cap problems would be an issue, but literally if we sign Will Fuller, it's going to be tough to do anything else with where this team is at. Right now, there's $30 million in cap space. Laramie Tunsil is about 20 of that. Deshaun Watson, close to 16, and get ready for next year. It's not going to get easier in that department. His contract cap number more than doubles. Brandon Cooks, Whitney Merciless, Zach Cunningham. Merciless under contract still for a while at just 70 overall after some regression here. And I guess you could consider cutting him now. Why don't we take a look at our regression here. We have Darren Fells going down 30 points at age 35. Little bit of regression here for players at 28 and 29 years old, 30. Randall Cobb down 14 points, Watt down just five. You know that like higher development players tend to regress better in franchise or regress a little bit less. So like, I think if we had JJ Watt, like he's gonna be good for a while. But certainly right now, we have to look at opening up some salary. There is one player who has been hurt this year that I overlooked a bit, and that is Bradley Roby, and I think that he's a really solid corner, definitely good enough to be the number one. Cornerback is still in need, but at least having him, with Gary on Conley and Vernon Hargreaves being free agents, it's a little bit easier to move on from them knowing you have Roby, but I'm still kind of wondering if we should have Conley for next year at least he's looking for a two-year deal that is pretty reasonable but again the cap is in just such an awful spot i don't know oh, what i want to do right now and it's not like i watched you know played this whole season out i'm kind of making decisions just after you know the real life season watching one game so that adds on to the challenge I think right here we're going to let Vernon Hargreaves go, but I want to try signing Conley. I almost wonder if I should let this one go to free agency, and I haven't done a lot of uh, off-seasons in this game, I just started doing Madden 21 content, so I'm not sure exactly if I could do a little bit better in open free agency. I think it's possible, but let me just give this offer here, I think it's reasonable. So we'll keep Gary on Conley. We're letting a lot of these players go that are in the 60s. I will look to do a lot of change here for players that I want to bring in to develop. This is one of my favorite parts of franchise mode is being able to build up the bottom of the roster. So I don't see us keeping any of these players right now. I think PJ Hall is somebody I'd like to see a bit more of here. So if we could sign him to a one year deal, I would like that $2.27 million. I think we'll get Michael Thomas signed as well. At the very least, I think he'd be a, a third safety. He could back up free or strong safety. Has uh, 
you know, only 69 zone and man coverage, but I think that we need depth like that right now on the team. So what does that leave us with then if we sign Fuller? Only seven and a half million dollars. If we release Whitney Merciless, we will free up some cap space here, but there is a penalty of four and a half, so it's only a three million dollar net gain. But I don't think he's going to be a player for us to build around. He just had some bad regression this year. He's only a 70, so we are going to release him. And then we have to come back around to finally decide here on one of my favorite players here in the NFL, Will Fuller. And I fully intended to keep him on the team, but I am just so worried about where this team is in terms of the cap that I don't know if this is going to be a good idea to sign him to a four-year deal. And will he take this one? I also wonder what the cap number would be on a franchise tag. Okay, one of the ways we can open up some cap space here is if we release Duke Johnson. We could also look at trading him, and that would give us $5 million more in cap room. And I think that's kind of important for this team. Right guard, Zach Fulton is only a 66 overall. If we release him, we open up $3.5 million. We'll do that now. So that gives us a little added flexibility there. Will Fuller and Brandon Cooks. Very speedy duo. Cooks also could be cut at any point here and we wouldn't have any dead cap. Will Fuller and him are both great deep threats. The ratings are really similar. I want to keep around Will Fuller. And I think that with Brandon Cooks... Oh. But it doesn't look like Will Fuller wants to stay. Franchise tag 8. $15 million. This contract here, this is an average of 12.8, so the franchise tag would be quite a bit. I think that the franchise tag would make sense here if we intended to trade him. We are going to franchise tag Will Fuller. There's still going to be a lot more that happens in this offseason. Oh, I can't wait to see how the next GM of the Texans approaches this. And I think they just signed a GM. So, it's going to be a challenge. A lot of hard decisions are on the way for this team. At the very least, I mean, there's Deshaun Watson. That's one thing that, you know, is always going to give you a chance. $10 million in cap space at the moment. That could change. Let's try to trade Duke Johnson here. Does anybody have a lot of interest? A few teams do. Maybe I can get more. I try to be reasonable with the trades. A four for Duke Johnson I think would be fair or a five. Let's see if a fourth rounder here gets it done to make him Atlanta's newest running back. Okay, so that opens up more space. And here is free agency with our 14 million in space. And there certainly are some opportunities here to get better. I think that the defense has a few solid players at all levels. So that's nice. We have Bernardrick, McKinney, Zach Cunningham, Justin Reed. When Bradley Roby recovers, he'll be the number one corner. And then J.J. Watt. I really don't want to trade Watt right now. I suppose if we're not very good this coming year, we can do it in season, but I like to keep JJ Watt on the roster for this year, and I wanted to keep Will Fuller as well. By franchise tagging him, we're able to make a decision later on if we want to trade Brandon Cooks again, although he's said publicly how he does not want to be traded again. He wants to be cut if they don't want him. And if we did that, that would uh, free up a lot of cap space as well. The top thing here that I think needs to be fixed is the interior of the offensive line. Looking at guard is going to be a big priority. And I'm okay going into this newest season with Tunsil, Howard, maybe Nick Martin as well. What's his awareness? 82 is at least good. Other traits are lower. Awareness is very important at center nowadays in Madden. So the guard spots are my main targets there. Uh, running back is definitely going to be a target, especially after trading away Duke Johnson. 
And then we have, you know, Ross Blacklock can play, J.J. Watts. Hopefully somebody can step up here on defense. So why don't we just go right to guard here, the number one need. We could find some upgrades there, but they would not be all that high rated. But because we need two and we don't pick until the third round, feel like we kind of have to be active here. And this is, you know, the market. For a 73 guard, over five a year, competing with teams for a 29-year-old, Matt Filer. I'm going to put a low offer out here for Pat Elfline, who didn't pan out with the Vikings, and now he's with the New York Jets. And I don't think he would be the solution here. But again, we need two starting guards. We don't pick till the third round, and there are other major areas of concern on the roster. That probably won't work. Edge rusher is another top concern of mine. Romeo Aquara coming off a really nice season with the Detroit Lions. We might need more cap space though to consider signing somebody like him. Trey Hendrickson had a really good year with the Saints. Everson Griffin's a free agent. Oh wow, I just realized. Because they have Will Fuller in here as injured, he is not tradable at all. And I was about to consider, you know, maybe this is the right move. We already have Brandon Cooks on a multi-year contract for $11, $12 million a season. But I can't trade Fuller. I can't trade him for 12 weeks, which means we couldn't use that cap space now to sign anybody. So, do we feel like we can go into the draft and start to fill some of these spots, not picking to the third round? Or do we need some more free agent help? Oh wow, Randall Cobb's contract is even uncuttable right now. We would not be getting anything. So we're going to have Cobb again this season. We have Cooks, we'll have Fuller again. The O-line is a problem. I think I'd like to get a deal done here with Romeo Aquara. I want to try at least. So if we give this offer here, Obviously, we're not left with very much cap space at all, so we may have to pull the offer for Elf Line. But maybe we come away only making one real free agent move and just rely a lot on the draft. When you think about these players that we could bring in, it's not like we can get rid of Brandon Cooks and sign three new starters as a result. Like, to make a difference here at Edge Rusher, we're looking at, you know, a pretty big amount of money here. Two years, 17.8 for Aquara, who would be a scheme fit at 26 years old at least. But most of these other starters that could come in and help, they're looking for big contracts. I think, you know, if we were to cut J.J. Watt, we replace him with two players. And I just don't think that's all that worth it. Obviously, I think that if I knew I couldn't trade Fuller, I probably wouldn't have franchise tagged him, and I could have done something with that cap space. So that probably was not the right move. And now this would be a pretty big deal for Aquara, but I think that we need the edge rush help, and he's a solid player that can still get better. He's not already 29. He's probably not going to get a ton better unless he were to get some awards or something. But a 79 overall edge rusher here can still make a difference for us. But how much is it going to take here to get the lead? They don't show uh, the opposing team's points here any longer. This gives us the lead over Baltimore. And this is not a situation where I want to build a huge lead over them because I probably need that remaining $5 million to go and do something. So... I think that's all I'm going to do in this stage. You certainly could have approached this differently if you were just to say no Fuller, no JJ Watt, make the same cuts I did. Suddenly you have a lot of space, but I just don't think it's the right free agent class to go and take those kinds of shots. You have, you know, veterans like Sherman, Gronk. Like who would be worth giving the big deals to here? like a three or four year contract maybe Hendrickson but that's why I went with uh, Aquara because he's 26 scheme fits so let's go to the next stage here let's see if we can at least bring in Aquara 
Yes, we did. All right. So a new edge rusher. That's how we replace Whitney Merciless then. Romeo Aquara is here. Bradley Roby is back now. PJ Hall is back. So the defense, I think, looking better for next season already. We address edge rusher. We have our number one corner back. We move Aquara to linebacker in this defense where he's a 77 overall. 6'4", 263 with good power moves, speed. I think he's got some pretty good ratings here. Maybe you think the contract was too big. So as much as I'd like to make two big offensive line upgrades, I think it's probably going to be just one. We'll look for a new right guard. We'll let Sharping start here at left for the time being. What I think we're seeing here is that we have a lot of needs. And when it comes time for the draft, we can kind of give it uh, a BPA focus, whether that's uh, a corner or an edge rusher, defensive lineman, guard, who can create the biggest difference at their position because there are needs all over. Might be a good idea to look at a corner as well. There are some players here in the mid 70s that I think could come in. Traverius Ward is a scheme fit, 79 overall. Pretty solid ratings here across the board. He has press, enough speed. I'd love to bring him in on a one-year deal. Let's see. $4 million? Would that get it done? That wouldn't be like a 40-point offer. That would be a 62-point. All right, Charvarius Ward accepts the contract. So now it's him and Bradley Roby. That takes care of corner a little bit because I think we can play both of them on the outside. And then there's still Gary on Conley. So maybe we don't have to think about corner for a year in the draft. We can look elsewhere. With that signing now, there isn't a lot more we can do in free agency. The rest has to really be done in the draft unless we make more moves. So why don't we take a look at some of our needs then and the scouting that I have done. Running back is something that I think I'd consider with one of those fourth round picks. We now have three picks there and there are some really good value running backs. First round talent here, Jaqueline Pearson from Texas Tech, carrying, juke, break tackle, all really solid. 4-5-2 speed is just going to be decent, but good change of direction. 21 bench reps. He is an option and has that early first round talent. I didn't realize it was early. So he's going to be one of the higher rated players in this class then. He's a fourth rounder though. In terms of projection, he probably goes in the third. Not necessarily an option for us with that first third round pick. I can't see me going running back there. There's another first round talent here, Jeremiah Bradham, late first round talent who offers more speed and more strength at 21 years old. A carrying, A minus trucking, B plus juke. I think I like him more even though the talent grades him lower. There are some other options at the position. There's Moses Carnegie who has the speed and the vision combination. I like that a lot. Receiver is something I think we'll talk about next year especially, but there are chances here. And one player I like a lot, Drayvon Collins. 6'4", getting some more size at receiver would be nice. He's a physical archetype, which is what this scheme is looking for. Vertical, number one. Bench press, number two. Four, five speed should be enough with a spec catch. Maybe a tight end is something we can consider. Gordon Norwood, second round talent, 4-7 speed. I know tight ends are a lot faster in this game compared to Madden 20. Very good as well on the bench reps, so you might get a very versatile tight end here with Norwood. O-line stands out as probably the most glaring need, and that's where I've scouted a lot more overrated players. I have found one second round talent here that's realistic for us to draft that might have a chance to play early on. That's Andrew McCoy from Oklahoma State. Very high bench reps. He is a power archetype player. Late two talents. He'll definitely be a target. 
If Andrew Jenkins were to slip into the third round, that's possible, but it just wouldn't be likely if the game drafts similar to other Maddens. And then if we want to go to defense, the D-tackles in this class are really good, and that's where I think the third round is going to give us the most value. We have a few players there, obviously J.J. Watt, but for how much longer in Houston? Ross Blacklock, first rounder a year ago, there's P.J. Hall, but a lot of choices here if you want to add another defensive lineman, even if they move to D-end. Kerry Borden does have early first round talent, by the way. He had the most reps at the position with a sub 5 second 40 and should be a really good day one run stopper if you think that role is valuable to attack with our first pick. Cornerback was also pretty good in this class and maybe I didn't need to sign Gary on Conley to the deal. I just didn't think I'd have a chance to get somebody like Ward for one year under five million with starting upside like he has. I won't rule out corner, but it's less of a need now. Everything here could have been approached so differently. And I think there are already a couple things that I wish I had done differently, but you could have gone in the complete other direction with like moving on from Watt and Fuller and made a bunch of free agent moves, had a lot more space and maybe gained some more draft picks. For me, my whole thought here was that, A, with Watson, you're not that far away to, compared to other teams that need a lot of work. And I just felt like if this team can stay healthy, there are impact players on this team. They have a lot of really good players and then a lot of spots where it's like you're hoping somebody really steps up. And... Maybe it's not the right approach to just try to keep the team mostly intact, make a couple additions, and then hope the draft is really good. Especially picking in the third round at your first pick, that's super risky. But just because I've seen the way the draft class looks in this game, I was okay going that route. Let's begin the NFL draft. Oh wow, they have the Jets picking number one here instead. I don't know why exactly. Must be a strength of schedule tiebreaker that works out differently in here. I don't know. I thought it was just going to be the Jaguars, but it's the Jets taking the first quarterback in the draft, Damon Price from West Virginia, who is a 73 overall. Now, I'm not sure what the best overalls are now in Madden 21. 73 sounds a bit low, but if I remember correctly, I think that's just kind of normal for this game. Now, Jacksonville. They go with Hugh Pugh, the defensive tackle. They don't go quarterback. They are going to stick with Gardner Minshew, it would appear, for another season. Rico Porter, defensive tackle off the board to the Atlanta Falcons. And then Joel Boyce to the Dolphins. Now, I didn't scout these early players. I have no shot of drafting them, but... I want to at least see the top 10 play out. Keenan Thomas to the Eagles, Brendan McMullen, Alan Carr, a tight end to Dallas, Paul McDaniels, Colin Rivers, and we're already getting into some of the 60 overall players, the high 60s. Marquise Bentley though, to the Broncos, that's a solid selection. Marquise Brown now to San Francisco, Patrick Tomlinson, really good corner class here. I know there's also going to be in the next franchise update as the Giants just took a running back at 80 overall. So Harold Selvey and Saquon Barkley. I was just going to say there's going to be some updates to the draft logic. Primarily, it looks like, for when teams select quarterback. Pittsburgh makes a lot of sense. They go Braden Jennings here. And Chris Ford is the last pick of the first round. So already into the second, we will make our way closer to the third, where it's time for us to finally join the NFL draft. It's going to be so interesting to see what Houston does this year in real life. Like, GMs tend to come in and they want to make a lot of change. But 
the changes you'd make with this team are with like your key players. You have JJ Watt, Brandon Cooks, Will Fuller, Whitney Merciless. Those are the players who like have the big decisions to be made this year. So we're closing in on our pick. I had no interest in trading up. I think we need all our picks. We have to build depth. We can't do it in free agency. We spent all our cap space already. So finally, we are on the clock for the first time. We do pick three times in the fourth. That should be pretty fun, but let's go. Well, here's the available board. There are some players here who have fallen and the number one player they have here on my board would be Brian Trevino, the wide receiver from Notre Dame. But I don't think I'm going wide receiver in this spot. So if you want to go best player available right here, which I think is a solid approach. I've seen one early first rounder outside of running back. And that would mean that Kerry Borden would be the best player for us to take here. He's only 21 years old. First in bench reps would help shore up the run defense that was just awful in 2020. One of the worst in the NFL. He doesn't have any pass rush skills here in the top three, but the three cone and 20 yard shuttle were at least decent. The 40, really solid. I don't think he's going to be a one dimensional player. Now, I'm not saying he's for sure going to be the replacement for J.J. Watts, but he could have a really nice impact on this defense and make moving on from Watts a lot easier. I want to make Kerry Borden the first pick of this series here in the third round. Borden, 75 overall hidden development defensive tackle. I don't know if he'll play nose or end in this scheme, but... Hidden development, great strength and block shed on day one. And while he might not be a great pass rusher right now, with him being 21 years old and having hidden development, you can certainly get there. The athleticism's in place. He's strong. He can stop the run right away. I like this pick a lot. He's the sixth best player in the class. That is a really nice way to start. And now there's another front seven player that I was looking at that we may have to move up for. If we want to add another edge rusher, Max Ridley from Clemson, early four projected late two talent. Would it be worth it to move up for him? He has a very good 40, finesse moves in the top three. Edge rusher is something we need to address even after signing Romeo Okwara. And I also don't have a lot of edge rushers on my board in this class. It's him and then Roman Ramsey, who is a power rusher. And he's more of a defensive tackle in a 4-3 scheme. We're going to sim a little bit here and consider a trade up maybe more towards the middle of this round. Looks like the third round run on quarterbacks is in this game as well. So let's see what it would take here to move up from our fourth round pick. If I put the five in here to move up 17 spots, I don't think that would get it done. But we're not far away. Let's sim a couple more picks. We have the Cardinals on the clock now. Tennessee, not going to trade with them here. Let's try Miami now. Oh, that is so close. I would have to put in the seventh round pick to get it done. We do have two sixes. So I think I'm okay with that. No, I don't think this is going to work, but I want to offer it. There we go. So we move up for the six and a seven. Move up 14 spots in the draft. And we still have three fourth round picks to make. So with this pick here, not necessarily the best player available, but the last chance for us to upgrade edge rusher because I didn't scout everybody here. I feel like Max Ridley here has good talent. It's a great value here. And again, last real chance to get an edge rusher. Ridley is a 69 overall normal development player. 
So he could be asked to start right away as a rookie. And that would sure uh, speed up development a little bit here. He's only 22 years old. Good speed. The strength isn't bad either. And he's a finesse rusher. Also only 84 injury. That's a little low. So we go defense first and second. Jaqueline Pearson's taken now. He was the top running back available. Still looking to address that position at some point. And with our fourth round picks, might be somewhere in there. And now those corners are going. And they were higher rated. But I like our corner situation at the moment. I liked it more than our edge rusher situation. So let's get back on the clock here. There was a guard who had second round talent. It looks like he already went. So if we want to look at O-line now, we could look at Andrew McCoy and moving him to guard. He did have a good bench. Late second round talent. We don't pick again until the 19th. I think I want to make sure we address this spot. Andrew McCoy, 69 overall, normal development, is an upgrade for us at right guard. And he is a run blocker. Not a great pass blocker right away. 90 strength, 80 lead block. Hopefully he can develop into a more complete player. Not looking to trade up anymore. Once was enough. But so far, I do like the draft. I think free agency... I don't know. I'm not sure if I did the right stuff in free agency, but I like the draft so far. We still have three picks to make, including this one here in the fourth round. We still have 14 players left on the draft board. All of these players. So we could consider running back now. I think that that is an option. Drayvon Collins, I think, is also really intriguing. So, do we feel like we could address anything here early 5th, which is half a round away? Collins probably going pretty soon. His projection is early 5. So, this seems like the last chance to get him. If we want to look at running back, three 5th round projected players. One is a mid-5 projected. Bradham is a mid-5 projected. And then Chip Abbott is late 5. Bradham, a first round talent with 445 speed, carrying, trucking, juke, strength. Wouldn't be a bad option. I do think running back makes more sense here, although I'm very intrigued by Drayvon Collins. I think because we have enough receivers right now, there's going to be more receivers in the next draft. And there's going to be more running backs as well, but we need somebody to split carries with David Johnson today and for that reason we are going to take jeremiah bradham right here can he be the future running back of this team he'll certainly get the chance late one talent he also has normal development good pick again for us out of syracuse 89 speed 83 trucking 80 break tackle 80 vision can he catch the football no so, it looks like the third down back responsibilities are still going to be David Johnson's. Also, I think this is showing just like how much more difficult they need to make the draft process because we've made a lot of really good additions without a first and second round pick. I didn't really need them. I can still take Drayvon Collins here. I could also take a tight end. Gordon Norwood is intriguing to me with both of our tight ends at 29 or older as well. I want Collins and Norwood, but I don't think that's going to happen. We're going to take tight end Gordon Norwood here. 69 overall from the University of Texas. A possession archetype tight end. Now his strength was really high. His blocking is very low at 57, 83 speed, 81 catching. Perhaps the blocking can get better, but I think that he would have a chance to get some snaps very quickly. Now, we don't pick again till late 6, so I'm probably missing out on the rest of my draft board. 
But what do you think about the draft here? My first one with this team. Don't have as good of a feel for this roster as I would have if we did the entire season. But overall, I like how the draft started and I think that we have a chance to compete this year. We're going to ask a lot of these rookies, hope for some quick development out of them. But overall, I think this team can be a lot better quickly. Two players left on the board and one is a third round talent at wide receiver. So we've gone pretty offensive heavy with our recent picks. Here's what we've done, three in a row on offense. How do we end the draft? I think here we're going to go with Chad Briggs. Take a player that we know is at least going to be a solid value for us. Even though we have a couple good deep threats already, I don't know how long we're going to keep the two of them together. But now we bring in Chad Briggs. And while he is a deep threat archetype, I don't think that's going to be all he can do with this skill set right away. I think that... The skills are in a spot to where you could take him in whatever direction at the position you like. Probably not a physical archetype. You're not, you know, super high at like catching traffic, although spec catch is nice. So I like Briggs here. We can work on route running a little bit, release, and whatever role is best. He's already got, you know, a skill set ready to start wherever. So I like that pick. I like it more than my running back pick, actually. So, let's end the draft. See if I made any mistakes here. Overall, I'm happy with our draft. I think that we're going to have a lot of early contributors from this draft class. And we should get a lot of development as a result. The number one pick, though, was Damon Price. He went to the Jets with normal development. He has 88 throw power, the accuracy is better downfield, 88 throw on the run, 88 speed. So an interesting day one skill set here for Price. We'll see if that works out for the New York Jets. We had also seen Pittsburgh take a first round quarterback in Braden Jennings. Normal development for him, 88 throw power, better at throwing short, and 81 speed. So our first pick ended up being Kerry Borden. I think that was the right move, and I'm excited about that pick. There were some other players you could have considered there, but I think the harder choices were in the later rounds, like when we moved up here for Max Ridley. We could have taken Jaqueline Pearson instead. 76 overall running back with 89 speed. One more than the running back we selected, but better change of direction, 82 break tackle, and he can catch the football. But we would have had to make that pick right here at round 3, pick 21. Leo Clifford is a player I passed on. He was a corner with normal development. 93 speed, 70 man, 71 press coverage. Moses Carnegie had more speed at running back. And a little bit of catching ability here at 69 catching. So he could have been a choice as well. Now, I missed out on Drayvon Collins. I decided to go with a tight end instead. Collins, 6'4", 218, 21 years old with 89 speed, 86 spectacular catch. So, I've had some success with receivers with this kind of a skill set. I think back to like Hakeem Butler in my Broncos series had a similar skill set. I think you could develop Collins quite a bit. And perhaps he would have had some playing time early with us. But I think that's going to be a little tough considering who we already have with Cooks, Fuller, QT. So Will Fuller is healthy again. We would be able to trade him now if we wanted or more at the trade deadline. We could always consider that. I think I would have traded him if it would have let me earlier in the offseason. But right now, I kind of like our roster. But at the same time, we have 55 players right now. I'm not sure we can really bring in a lot of undrafteds. $3.2 million in cap space. We can make some signings. Let's bring in an undrafted running back here from Miami. This is JJ Harris. He is 21 years old. 
He does have some speed, change of direction ability, and he can catch passes and run short routes. Let's also bring in a wide receiver here with a really intriguing skill set. 91 speed, 77 catch in traffic, 76 medium route running, Quincy Etienne from Texas. We also need to bring in a backup quarterback for this season. And I would like to sign to Rod Taylor here. You could consider Taysom Hill, RG3, or somebody else, but not a significant difference. But let's bring in Taylor here, which leaves us with basically no cap space. Somehow we can make this work. We have $170,000 right now in cap room. If we were to make a move with Cooks or Fuller next episode, we could make more. I can't do anything right now with Randall Cobb's contract. Hopefully next year. I don't want that deal. It's like a, a three-year contract. Like, it was a really strange signing to me. Two more years. And if we were to release him now, it would open up like $500,000 in space. So it doesn't show all the rookies here in the right spots. But McCoy at right guard would be what I'm looking at here. And then getting Norwood some chances, perhaps over Fells. You could release Fells as well and make uh, a couple more million dollars in space. We could consider that. And then defensively, Borden, Watt, probably Ross Blacklock. Defensive line does have some players here. It's getting a bit crowded for playing time. But I couldn't pass on Borden. That just wasn't going to happen. For Omenahu, we'll see if he can continue to develop. P.J. Hall, he's entering his contract season. I like our corner situation going into the new year. We have Okwara as one edge rusher. We'll get to see one of our rookies at the other spot, get some playing time. So that is where we're at now, going into what's really the first year of the series. What did you think of my first offseason? I think most would have done things a bit differently. I kind of wanted to keep things together and just improve kind of the middle and bottom of the roster a little bit. And that might prove to be the wrong move. But we'll see. It's only going to get easier from here when it comes to cap and whatnot because there are so many contracts on this team that are not helping. But that is going to bring an end to episode two, everybody, here in the Houston Texans Rebuild franchise. Hope you enjoyed the video and are ready for more on the way. Please leave your feedback down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe. I'll see you all with more soon. Have a great day.